So you right now think they're going too far. You've heard Ethan's points and what Steve was talking about. Uh, please jump in here. I'm so glad you had Ethan on because you need somebody to articulate what the Fed is thinking. And Ethan did a great job of describing what the Fed is currently thinking, that inflation came from an overheated economy. The problem is that's just wrong, wrong, wrong. We don't have an overheated economy. It's growing at a very modest rate. We don't even, the inflation was not caused by an overheated job market. It, we, wages have gone up by less than inflation. So, so the job market is not what's caused this inflation rate. What caused this inflation rate was a 40% increase in the money supply. We flooded the U.S. economy with money at the beginning of COVID in an unprecedented growth. Too much money chasing too few goods is what causes inflation. That is what happened. It is not because of an overheated economy. I just... I'm sorry to be frustrated about this, but this is Ethan is articulating what the Fed is currently thinking, and that's going to be a policy mistake if they stick to this because the economy is slowing. So, Ethan, what would they say in response here? Well, I studied monetarism as a grad student. My advisor was Phil Kagan, who was a disciple of Milton Friedman, so I know how monetarism works. There's no magic link between the money supply and inflation and growth. Money, strong money growth and easy Fed policy stimulates spending and creates capacity problems. And that's what creates the inflation. You don't have a link that jumps straight from money. It's the spending and the demand it's creating. Well, if you look at the money supply now, we're still miles above where we were before uh, this pandemic and before the, the this fiscal stimulus poured massive amounts of money into people's uh, bank accounts. We're still like 15% above normal in terms of bank deposits. So um, it, if, we, if really the story is getting the money supply back to normal, then the Fed needs to do even more than what I'm talking about. Charlie? Kelly, do you have the graph of the money supply? It I, has I, gone I assume so, the, yes. <laughs> we, we, we've got M2 around here. We'll show it. In history. So the money supply went, oh, there it is. The money supply went up by the most in history in February of, of 2020. That is what caused the highest inflation in the last 40 years. But look what happened in uh, April of last year. For the first time ever, we've never had actually the money supply go down in a year. It's now going down. It stopped going up. There is a lag, but we're coming up on almost nine months from when the money supply stopped going up. And so now we're seeing inflation coming under control. Yes, we still have year-over-year -year inflation, but on a month-over-month -month basis, we're down to about 3%. And even that is overstated because the housing data is, is miscalculated. So we are very close right now to acceptable levels of inflation. Money supply is coming down. The last thing we need to do right now is send us into a recession and mess up the job market. Ethan, I'll give you a final word on this. <laughs> okay, so I have that same chart in my deck. This shows you how uh, crazy economics is. I have that same chart in my deck, but the way I interpret it is differently. During the boom phase where the Fed was pouring liquidity in the system and fiscal policy was, was throwing money at the economy, the money supply was $4 trillion above its trend line. That's that You can see it in that chart. It was massively above what would have been had it followed a trend. Now it's $3 trillion above trend. So it's still three trillion above trend now, and what's the reason it's dropping is because all those people who left money in their bank deposits from their stimulus checks and everything else are now out there spending their money, and that's kind of giving the economy this last wind that it's had in the last in the last six months with consumer spending holding up. But the money supply is like miles; it's three trillion dollars above its trend line. That's better than being four trillion above the trend line, but. Um, it's it's just it's still a sign of, of an overheated, overstimulated economy. We've got to get back to something closer to normal here.